Sam Fletch and I'm here to talk about this guy. This is the Cena 10C Evo, uh, which is the brand new um, communicator come camera as well. Uh, what it does is that um, it acts as a communicator and also it is a camera as well. Now, the Cena 10C first came out in 2012 and uh, it was uh, 1080p only, right? And uh, they, in, in fact, they released a couple of years ago the uh, the Cina 10C Pro, which is then a 2K camera, and finally they've released this one, which is a 4K camera. Now, besides being a camera, it is also a communicator, right? It's able to communicate up to four bikes, it's Bluetooth, right? Uh, and it also can go up to about 1.6 kilometers distance between each uh, between each rider. Um, the good thing about this camera and what it differs from the old one is that the old one used to have a little knob, and there's a lot of hit and go, touch and go in terms of how you would uh, be able to see uh, whether you know it's aligned, whether the horizon is aligned, and whether you're getting the correct view or not, whether it's up or down or uh, on the side. Uh, in this case. The Senna, right, has actually released an app, uh, which is on your phone, uh, called the camera app for the 10C Evo. And it takes the guesswork away because you connect via Wi-Fi, it has its own uh, ID which you can connect to. And then what happens is then you'll be able to see and adjust uh, the level up or down. And they have a little uh, little catch here, that you can, hopefully you can see, that you can adjust uh, the horizon to ensure that you know it is not off to the side, uh, that you actually have a level plane of view. Um, the Evo comes with uh, in in the box, right? It comes with, of course, uh, the boom mic, which is this, uh, which is just this guy here. It comes with a clamp. It also comes with the uh, sticky um, a 3M sticker, which has the mount as well. I wouldn't suggest that you do that because you won't be able to adjust once it's stuck there and it's hard to take off anyway and you're going to damage the helmet. I would always suggest using the clamp because then you could adjust accordingly uh, because the problem with a side mount would mean that you'll be able to see part of the helmet. Uh, in my case, this is uh, the Shoei Neotech and it's a modular as you can see. And what happens is that I can't push it too much further but if you have a full face helmet, uh, not a modular one, then you'll be able to move it forward and not be able to see the front part of uh, your helmet. Um, the boom mic, uh, if, you, if you watch uh, Senna's YouTube channel and they talk about the best way uh, to use the, the, the boom mic, it's supposed to be close to your mouth. Uh, and there's a little tab that shows you the direction of the mic. Um, and it comes with a little sponge. Uh, this little furry thing, the dead cat is called, is something I added because it's supposed to keep off the wind. Uh, but honestly, um, I will still have to do a lot of processing on the road and later on you'll get to see when I take it out on the road uh, for you to, to actually hear, look, watch the video, see the quality and also listen to uh, how good this boom mic sounds. It actually does very well on low speeds but the moment you get up to highway speeds at 65 uh, kilometers an hour, that's when the problem happens and that's when uh, there's a lot of wind noise. So you have to be careful about the placement of the mic. Uh, so they sometimes suggest place it behind. They, they have another mic attachment, which is uh, a wired one for full face helmets. You can actually attach it behind the, the cheek pad if you want. But the problem is that, again, it cuts down the noise. But then again, uh, I'm not sure what the reception is going to be like, even though when you watch the YouTube channel on Senna, it does sound good. But again, it's all low speeds. At high speeds, I don't think it's going to handle very well. And then if you're talking to your colleague, I'm not talking about vlog, but if you're talking to your colleague or your rider, fellow rider, you probably won't be able to hear anything anyway, right? So I suggest that, that, that you get a dead cat and hopefully it makes a little bit of a difference. I, I also took some videos earlier uh, to show a difference and I won't process it to let you hear the difference between the sponge and uh, the dead cat, right? So this is the, the Senna 10C. Uh, I will put up the specs here to let you know uh, what it has, uh, what are the frame rates and what are the uh, recording uh, qualities, video resolutions uh, and what else that it has uh, in terms of a, uh, of a communicator. And of course, uh, the one thing I really like about 
uh, most of the new centers is they have this little jog dial and this little button here for the intercom and of course to start and stop music and here is the jog dial for your volume and this particular button here is to start and stop recording so everything is well uh, within reach and it's of course glove friendly as well so right now let's take it onto the road and take a look and see how it handles in terms of video and in terms of sound as well Right, hello folks, I'm here on the road again. Uh, and here we, today we're testing out the uh, the video and audio quality of the, uh, the Senna 10C EVO. Uh, this uh, has only been released a couple of months ago, and as I mentioned earlier, the uh, the camera has improved, and, and to me it was surprising that it took them so long to uh, be doing a 4k camera considering that uh in 2012 i believe that the gopro has already reached the uh, uh 4k uh limit or 4k resolution i would say limit and uh it only started at 1080p uh, which is just h uh high definition quality uh and of course uh the stabilization was nothing like the stabilization of the GoPro. So I'm not going to do a comparison. The GoPro obviously is going to be uh, something different. And the GoPro is the uh, standard uh, that you use for action cameras. Um, if, when you do decide to get uh, the uh, Senna 10 Evo, or the Senna 10 whichever version it may be, communicator from camera, there's always, uh, you have a reason for it, and uh, it's always about uh, the uses, right? Um, it, this is not primarily used as a, an action camera, I wouldn't say, but uh, why I would choose it, uh, and why I did choose it, was because uh, number one, it uh, it's the best of both worlds. It's a communicator, and also it's a camera. Now, if I decide, I, I, of course, it's part of the the content that I want to produce here uh, on my YouTube channel it is specifically for to, to drive uh, information and, and so forth, and of course. Uh, to do something completely different, right? To do a dual vlog, rather than have two people with two GoPros and a mic uh, connected, uh, and then have to do a lot of uh, post editing, and then you know you have to think about the timing of, of what you're saying and everything else. Uh, whereas this is you hear real time, uh, the quality that you get uh, of the communication is very very clear. Uh, so, uh, in fact, I had used it before on my 10C, the first one that I ever had, uh, and it was actually really very good. Uh, it was, um, I used it for one of my videos, uh, which is a trip I did two years ago to Patong, and I'll put it up in the cards above uh, for you to take a look and hear the sound and quality of the video, uh, but do uh, take note that even though it's 1080p, what I've done was uh, I up it to 4K, uh, so the quality is still pretty acceptable, uh, even when you think about it, and the colors and everything else. Um, before I talk about the pros and cons, uh, let's talk again about the, the specifications, which uh, I'll leave it uh, on either side so that you will actually have a look, so I'm not going to guess at some of it, right? So when you talk about resolutions, it goes from uh, 4K, 2.7K, uh, 1080 and 720p. Uh, and they all record at 30 frames per second. Uh, the, again, it's not pretending to be a, a, an action camera, so it's not going to do slow motion and stuff, so I don't think uh, it was aimed at that particular market. So that's why the frame rates are fixed at uh, 30 frames per second. 
uh, for all of it. Uh, this communicator now can connect up to six riders uh, up to a distance of about 1.6 kilometers, which is pretty good, right? Uh, again, I used it uh, in my trip to Phuket with a friend, and uh, I'll put that up in the cards as well. Uh, now you can see I did a kind of a dual vlog, although my friend was pretty quiet. Uh, he didn't speak very much, but you can actually hear a little bit. And uh, the quality of the audio was pretty good as well, uh, except for, well, anyway, uh, you will still have to do a lot of post-processing, um, just like this one as well. Um, now, again, when you decide to get the uh, 10C EVO, uh, you have to think about what is it that uh, you want to do, right? Um, definitely not for an action camera. You need an action camera, please go and get uh, a GoPro because a GoPro sound and visual quality is so much better, stabilization is much better, and so on and so forth. But for me, it is uh, number one primarily because of my vlogs and the content that I want to produce here uh, so that I can actually have a dual vlog and so forth uh, with another rider. Uh, the other thing would be that you know, you can you can actually set it to loop, and that it can act as a safety camera uh, should anything go wrong. Uh, at least you have uh, a visual record of uh, what has been transpired at that point in time, right? You wouldn't use it uh, again like an action camera. Let's talk about uh, the downside. Again, uh, for whatever reason, I think um, the, the sound quality, and, and I, I don't know if it's because of the, 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 the mic, but it picks up the wind noise far more than the lavalier mic that I use uh, on my GoPro. Uh, the positioning is still the same. Uh, whether I place it within my helmet, it's the same helmet that I'm using right now, uh, it would still, for whatever reason, uh, pick up all the wind noise. Uh, and the other thing that you need to take note of is this, uh, which I find very strange. Uh, earlier I mentioned about the camera app, so that you can actually see the positioning of your camera whether it's too far up, it's pointing too far up, or it's pointing too far down, or the, the horizon is tilted too much to the left or to the right. Now, the camera also gives you manual control. Manual control meaning uh, that you can set the right balance, you can set the, uh, the well, not the frame rates, but you can actually set uh, the saturation, the colors, you can actually set uh, the ISO and so forth, and uh, I find that the, uh, it what it doesn't have, and I think you need that sometimes because you know you can you can only tell when you're actually writing uh, what the environment is going to be like. Like this, you see, this is bright sunlight, and uh, if you can set it like the GoPro to auto, I know the auto is not always the best thing to do, but I know the GoPro handles the auto uh, settings for the video very well. But here, in this case, if you set it manually, you have to guess. You know, you have to put the uh, the EV to minus one or minus seven or what have you, just to make sure that you know it's clear, not too bright, not too dark. The problem with uh, this camera, I realize, is that. Uh, if you're in the morning and you're going towards the sun, in a direction towards the sun, it doesn't handle direct sunlight very well. So I had uh, a couple of videos I did uh, with it, and it was completely washed out. Uh, you couldn't see anything on the road, uh, which I thought was pretty bad, because the GoPro with its automatic settings is able to reduce the exposure so that, you know, uh, you won't uh, get that 
uh, glaringness and you can be able to see everything on the road as well. Right? Uh, but here I noticed, so we, one of the things you have to consider is that if you're riding in the morning and you're doing a video and if it's like 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning with the sun directly in front, uh, <laughs> you have to be aware that it's not going to be uh, very clear. Now, uh, that being said, of course, you can always mount your phone here, connect to the to the Bluetooth. Uh, sorry, connect to the the the, the Tensi Evo, and actually take a look at your settings. So I don't know it was really very bad. You probably have to stop to one side, uh, make the adjustments, and then start your video. Uh, I think that's a real hassle. But you know, for the sake of uh, the video and content and and so forth, I think uh, it's something you have to do. It's something that you have to do. Uh, so, in all honesty, this camera will not be my main go-to camera. Uh, only if uh, I'm doing a dual vlog uh, and so forth, I'll still stick to my GoPro uh, Hero 7. Uh, even though it may be a little bit of a hassle to add the uh, the microphone and everything else. Right? So that's a con. But I think, to me, uh, if... You, you know it well enough, if you've done any a couple of testings, you kind of know, you know, roughly what uh, the environment is going to be like. So if it's a bright sunny day like this, you would then adjust it beforehand, you would know, right? You've already had examples that you've done, uh, and, and it's not guesswork anymore. And then after that, if you realize, then the video will actually look pretty good. So I'm pretty lucky today, the traffic isn't very bad. Um, now, I'm sure that in this video you'll probably be able to see the front part of my uh, helmet. Uh, but again, it's all about choice of helmets. Uh, I, this is my favorite helmet, the modular Shoei New Tech 2. But if you have a full face helmet, you'll be able to push it a little bit more further in front so that uh, you'll be able to not see the front part of your helmet and be able to see what clearer so that it looks like as if you have a front mounted camera. Anyway, I think that, in all honesty, the, uh, the, the upside for me is more so than the downside, less the reason why I got it. I knew well enough what I was getting into. Uh, so again, I'm suggesting that, you know, if you do decide to get this camera, uh, think about what is it that you want it for. Action cameras, go go. If you want it for uh, security, and if you uh, want it to do what I do, uh, without much post-processing, and, and you will be able to have live conversations straight up for doing VLOG, then I think it's uh, the perfect camera for you, right? Know well enough to adjust it, uh, understand your settings so that, you know, you, you don't have a workout video or sport videos. Uh, I've only had a couple already, but now, uh, I kind of know exactly where uh, the setting should be and the video should turn out pretty good without much, uh, it's just, I probably end up having to do uh, a lot more post-processing for the audio. Again, I'm not sure how this is now, uh, hopefully uh, with all the various adjustments I've done and the position of the mic against uh, my mouth, Hopefully, it is not picking up uh, the wind noise as well. Anyway, this is my impression of it. It's uh, kind of a review and impression of uh, the Tensi, the Suda Tensi Evo. Uh, if you have any comments, please uh, leave it below. Any suggestions or uh, anything that you'd like to know more about this camera, please leave uh, your comments below. Um, and if you have not subscribed, please click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell to get notified of uh, the latest videos that I put out. So once again, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Uh, and all of you have a safe ride and an awesome journey.